I've troubled over this for years, and I've finally concluded that for intellectuals, pseudo-intellectuals, and all liberals, it's about control. It's not about raising revenue. You think Obama has any intention of paying for all this spending? Folks, if he had any intention of paying for it, he wouldn't do 90% of it because we don't have the money. They don't care about paying for it. All that's just words. All that's just rhetoric, paying for it because he knows you have to worry about paying for it. He knows we all have to be concerned about, oh, except, wrong again, except the words of Barney Frank and Chris Dodd who were getting given homes that everybody knew they could never pay for. And now Barney Frank and Chris Dodd, the architects along with Bill Clinton of the policy that gave us the whole subprime mortgage crisis, get to sit around and act as innocent spectators to investigate what went on when they largely had the biggest role in causing it? Congressman Frank's definition of affordable housing is you get a house that you don't have to pay for that uh, everybody else in the neighborhood will pay for. And why? Well, because it's unfair that some people can have a house and some people can't. See, it's just unfair. So, here we have two systems. We have socialism, collectivism, style, whatever you want to call it, versus, versus uh, capitalism. Now, admittedly, over here on the right side, capitalism, there will be unequal outcomes because we're all different. And some of us care more and have more passion and we know what we want to do and others are still struggling for it. Some people are just going to work harder than others. Okay, you get what you work for. Those who have a genuine inability for whatever reason are taken care of. We're compassionate people. On the, on the left side, when you get into this collectivism, socialism stuff, these people on the left, the Democrats and liberals today, claim that they are pained by the inequities and the inequalities in our society. And they, 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 they believe that these inequities and inequalities descend from the selfishness and the greed of the achievers. And so they tell the people who are on different income quintiles whatever lists, they say, it's not that you're not working hard enough. You could have what they have, perhaps, if you applied it. They're stealing it from you. So what liberals do, and I say this again to the, another thing, I know people in the country are watching. I was watching a focus group after um, some event this week. It might have been after Obama's State of the Union show. And... Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> And they had, it was, it, was a, uh, it was a typical, you know, drive-by media focus group. They round up losers. <laughs> Who hear Obama speak and think that the next day their gas tanks are going to get filled up. They're going to get a new house, a new kitchen, a new car. So this one guy said, oh, I it, was, it, was, it was some guy responding to Bobby Jindal. Oh, by the way, did you hear about Joe Biden? Joe Biden was mystified how Bobby Jindal got his shift off at 7-Eleven that night to make the speech. Uh, no, wait a minute. All right, time out, time out. Suspend speech for explanation. People watching at home. See, this, this, I'm glad this happened. Glad this happened. You think I just made a joke, an ethnic joke about Bobby Jindal, don't you? I didn't. I made a joke about the bigotry of the Vice President of the United States, Joe Biden.
Joe Biden, while walking through the train station he knows so well because he's such a real guy, uh, that he made a comment that you can't go into a 7-Eleven without seeing some Indian guy behind the counter. They're all over the place. Now let a conservative say something like that. And he's brought up before a John Conyers committee with Pat Leahy wanting at you next. Okay, I, many of you think I lose my places in these speeches when I interrupt for Mr. Biden. I'm not. By the way, what time is it? Okay, we have plenty of time. We have to be out of here by... We have to be out of here by six, otherwise there's... All right, okay. Depends on how you behave. I'll decide as we go on. What liberalism, Democrat, or for those of you in the country, I really, I really want you to believe this because it's the truth. I'm not saying this because I believe it. It's in my, this is a core. We want the best country we can have. We want the most prosperous people. We want to be growing. We want to lead the world. We want everybody to want to come here legally. We want this country to be so damn great. And we just cringe to watch it basically capitalism be assaulted, assaulted and our culture be reoriented to where the people that make it work are the enemy. That's not the United States of America. The people that make this country work, the people that pay in their mortgages, the people getting up and going to work, striving in this recession to not participate in it, they're not the enemy.